State your name and address for the record, please. My name is Carolyn Selby. My address is 6361 Fordham Road. I'm a transplant from Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for 42 years before I moved down here. And I watched the urban sprawl in Atlanta go out to Cab County, Grant County, and further. Um, I bought a house on Fordham Road in 1989. 92, I'm sorry. In 1992. I bought the house because it had a barn, a hay pasture, and it also had a small farm pond. When they paid Hambrick Road, I was able to give scrubs some dirt from my ponds to enlarge them. And I have two ponds on the property. My main agricultural for the property is hay. Um, I think when I look around Lowndes County, when I go up and down Valdell Road, when I go uh, through Hay Hire on 122, the building that we've got all over the place is out of bounds. Where are all the people going to come from that we're going to put in these places? Mrs. Quarterman brings up a good subject. Let's place houses where there are facilities. Our fire department is volunteer, and they save a lot of foundations. We don't need any more, and we certainly don't need any less than five acre properties on Fulham Road. We would appreciate it if you would turn down this request. Thank you. So, we still have some time. If anyone else is here who would like to speak against this case, please come forward. Let your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Harris Sutherland. I live at 5869 Corridor Road. We only have five acres, but where our five acres is, we are completely pretty much surrounded by woods except for one neighbor on one side. Um, I'm not going to be as technical as the last two, but we enjoy the wildlife. We enjoy being out in an agricultural setting. That's one reason we're out there. The subdivision, <coughs> everyone there is, is nice and everything else. More people, more noise, more cars, more dogs walking all night long. Um, when we went around to the signatures on this petition, everyone that I spoke to was like, what do they want me to do? I said, two and a half acre lots. They're like, no, no, give me the petition. That's the reason we moved out here. Others, we had to have five acres at least. They should have to have five acres. Everyone that I have spoken to in the last week, it's like me and my family. This, this is where we call home. This is our peace, our relaxation, where we get away from town and all the people, all the cars and all the business. Um, more people is going to mean it's going to impact our water, our ponds out there, our wildlife, and our way of doing things out there, and what we enjoy so much. So I am asking y'all to please, please, not pass this. Thank you, Ms. Tucker. We still have a few minutes. If there's anyone else who would like to speak against this case, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Sure, I'm John Porterman, I live at 6565 Porterman Road. Did y'all get this one here with the walls logo? Thank you. You did? Yes, it's in there. All right, well, Sarah could have been here tonight, so I'll just, uh, you've probably already read it. Basically, in addition to what you've heard from some other people, water is an issue. If you look, uh, by the way, I'd like to thank the county planner for including in this presentation some maps of the entire road. Those were not in the border package that was returned when I did an open records request. So it's good that now you've actually seen the entire road and you can see the agriculture and forestry that's actually characterizes the road. 
And you can see even on the 30 RPDO map that was in the board packet that there are two wetlands on the subject property. There are also wetlands directly across the road, and there's creek um, branch. Now, if more houses go in there, that could be more clear cutting, more impervious surface for driveways and roofs. There'll be more runoff going into the branch, going into the Wittipitchi River. And a point I don't think anybody's mentioned that's very important. If this thing gets approved, it'll be seen as a precedent. The next time somebody wants to point five acres, they'll just point and say, you let them do it, let me do it. And pretty soon, we'll have 2.5 acres all over Florida on the road, which will destroy the character of the neighborhood. I mean, if, if you're going to allow that, then why do we bother having um, agriculture, forestry, conservation character areas? If someone could get a foothold in like this and have it spread and destroy the character of it. So, you know, that's a basic reason to please. Could you recommend denial? And I hope the county commission will actually deny. Just one more thing. When my grandfather bought the farm, literally speaking, in 1921, uh, the reason it's called Portman Road is he gave the original right of way to the county. When he bought the farm, the, the stallies were already there. And you'll find on the petition, I think there's nine of the stallion clan signed, including some of, I believe, the grandchildren who heirs to the property which is how a lot of people feel about this. It's agriculture and forestry. It needs to remain agriculture and forestry for future generations. My niece, who owns my brother's former land, also signed. So I ask you to preserve the character of this rural area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Just one question. What did you say the name of that creek was? Tom Pratch. Tom Pratch, OK, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of creeks that the names are obscure. The other one that comes down in the middle of the south end is called Red Eye Creek. Okay. Very few people will remember that. Thank you very much. Time has expired for those who wish to speak against the case, so that will close the public hearing portion of this case. Commissioners, any further discussion? Yourself? Yourself? Uh, Jamie, I'm just curious, uh, the, the folks that's just requesting this change mm -hmm. to, I'm just curious, if they want to do this subdividing of this lots and make three lots, three more lots and keep their existing, or they want to sell the whole thing and get out? I just want to have an opportunity to buy the 18 acres. Understood. The applicants are uh, currently military, that's why they're not here tonight. Um, he had spoken to me, told me ahead of time he would not be here. He does plan to be at the Board of Commissioners meeting to answer questions. Uh, he is currently seeking just the option to sell something less than 17 acres or 5 acres. Um, when I spoke to him on the phone, he said that his, uh, he had heard from other people that they would love to be able to purchase in this area for the quiet nature of it, but they couldn't afford the 17 acres, and sometimes they couldn't get approved for an additional 5 acres. So they're not necessarily looking to develop this. I think they're just looking for the option to sell at less than a 5 acre standard. Um, but they have no real plans to develop them themselves or sell it off piecemeal, but they're just looking for the options at the time that they that they uh, move on from our community. So he had no um, desire just to divide it up into the three separate parcels that he's able to do now? No, ma'am. Those options were discussed with him prior to the submittal of a rezoning request. So, so he, just, he just basically is requesting one additional lot to be rezoned. Right. He's requesting the RA to give himself the option. So that it's, again, just a minimum two and a half, or if somebody wanted three or four. Can you go back to the options? Yes, sir. This is the current just EA again lot. Uh, that north-south line for the seven acres more or less runs along the edge of their property. In this previous picture, you can kind of see the house and where it's located. Uh, there's a pool structure in the back and the fence line. So I tried to run that north-south line there. Along the, edge of, along the edge of his existing property, creating two lots. And again, this could be done by right, whether the rezoning is yeah. approved or not. Um, the request for straight RA, again, this, this is too out of character with the area. These are very long, skinny lots, um, way too dense. I try to beat it up as much as possible, maximizing the amount of lots that you could get on this, 17.8 acres. Um, when you do the math, you can get seven lots total. And that's what's shown here. Um, and again, with a minimum of 210 to try to maintain the character of the area, to keep separation of lots. The houses to the north there are approximately 120 to 140 feet apart from each other. Um, 
but are also over 3,000 square feet. Uh, but that's, that's those two lots there, so I try to mimic that pattern moving south and then extend it with 210. But those lots are approximately 220 each. Again, a lot of surveyor, but that's approximately. And then again, limiting the lots so that you have three lots facing what southeast corner of uh, Portland Road is with those two lots there and the existing home site keeping the integrity of eight acres, which matches similar to the lots to the west being eight, nine acres uh, with some wetlands on the property. So if they, if they stay in the existing home, then he's really only asking for one more additional lot. Correct. So I, I'm just curious, Katie, with, with this with this schematic you got here with mm -hmm. one eight acre and three three acre lots, if you went over that option with the with the chases? Yes, these options were sent to them as well. And I'm just curious, what was his reaction to that? I These were emailed to him, so I have, and he, he was unresponsive. So I'm not sure if he's currently deployed, has not responded, but he was presented with these options, um, as well as the potential, uh, before he even submitted officially, I said, you can have three right now by right. You could potentially have no more than four with a staff condition. And then RA, you know, you could essentially get up to six or seven, depending on the layout with the surveyor. He understood those options and said he wanted to go forward with the rezoning, and that's that's where I last left it with him and haven't heard since. Can we look at the what he's allowed to do by right? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, this so is approximate. Those are three. Regardless if he gets two or three lots there, he's basically selling the same amount of land. Yes. So just keep it or And JD, will you show the picture again of? Uh, your recommendation with the conditions? This is at the minimum 210 foot lot width at the building line. Um, again, not too much different from the condition here. Just putting a lot behind the lot, not something uh, generally favorable, but it, as you can see, the lots to the north, same thing has been done there. You have two lots fronting Cordon Road, the 60 foot frontage, and then you can potentially put, uh, you can potentially put another lot easily here. Now you might have some wetland mitigation, how it would subdivide to put a lot back here. So there are, there are options for these lots going forward. There's also the provision of family ties, uh, which is not something that's what I was going to ask you. How, how many billable options are we on family ties? Family ties allows the lot to, to be cut up. Uh, the parent track has to remain in its current zoning, so in this case it would have to remain EA. And then they could subdivide off five one acre lots by right, uh, assuming they were. Or, Soon they were conveyed to a relative, immediate relative, uh, per ULDC guidelines. So, and that would be exempt from the 210 frontage? That would be exempt from the 210 frontage. It would have to be just a one acre lot width. Now, public health standards might dictate lot width for well and septic size. Again, soil suitability has not been conducted at this point. Uh, but five one acre lots in this area, especially given the pattern here, not something staff would recommend, uh, but could be done by right with a survey and an affidavit of who the lots should be conveyed to. And I don't think that's his goal here. No. I, I don't believe so. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's just looking for the option to pass along potential pieces of property to yeah. other members of the community or military community. Good discussion. I think this case merits it. Um, any other questions, commissioners, for staff before we move forward? Well, then I'll entertain a motion for some description. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Um, I really think that our rural areas are a very precious asset. It's something that we have down here that if we continue to allow sprawl, which we're supposed to hold in check and we're supposed to develop near where the services are available, and um, we're supposed to protect these agricultural areas as much as we can. And every time somebody comes into an area and they want to start breaking it down to whatever the, if it's two and a half acre lots or if it's five acre lots or whatever, it's just another step in the direction of making this area become more and more residential. And it destroys the wildlife patterns and people move out into the country because they love to get out there. They love to see the deer in their problem with property needs. They love to see the ducks and the geese come to their ponds. And they love all this activity, uh, just seeing the critters, raccoons, the possums, bobcats, coyotes, whatever it is, you know, people live in the country because they love that. And whenever we have somebody come in and they start pecking away at that environment, 
they end up really destroying. It's like the old adage, you know, how do you take down a, a, a huge wall? One brick at a time. It's the same thing. That's what happens here. And I just think that we need to um, protect this environment because it is precious. And if we don't protect it, our grandchildren and their children are not going to have it. And we'll, we'll get in a car and we'll ride and it'll be just like driving from Atlanta to Marietta, to Lawrenceville, to anywhere up there, it all looks the same. It has spread and become such a huge mass of humanity. And that's what can happen here. Go to Florida. Drive up and down the coast of Florida. You can't even tell where one of those little cities in and the next one begins. And it's traffic lights, block after block after block, mile after mile, for sometimes in some cases, you know, hundreds of miles along the East Coast. Where it's Highly developed. And that's the kind of um, <clears throat> thing that I think we really need to protect because rural areas and habitat are a precious thing. So I'm going to make a motion that we deny this request. I'll okay. second that. We have a motion from Commissioner Wiles to recommend denial. We have a second by Commissioner Roundtree. All those in favor of the motion to yeah, correct discussion? Excuse me, do we have some discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I, I totally agree with what Commissioner Wiles said, and I appreciate uh, Vicki seconding the motion I do, but I think my heartburn is the fact that we're looking at one lot, not 81 lots, one lot. Because right now, my understanding with the county is he can do two and keep the, keep the eight acres on the house, and we're looking at one additional lot, and it meets the same width as the two lots right beside it. So I, 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 just, I don't see where it's at. Like I say, it's not 81 lots. It's one. Okay. I'll make Sorry. a point that, <clears throat> although I don't have a huge problem with the three additional lots, that regardless, he will be able to sell off the amount of acreage that he wants to get rid of without changing Area. That, that, that's true. Now, I, I agree to that, but it's a price point. And you should know that too. Uh -huh. Anything else? All right, we have a motion to recommend denial and a second to that motion. All those in favor of the motion to recommend denial, please raise your hand. You got that, Mom? All those opposed to the motion to recommend denial, please raise your hand. 